So the moment that everybody's scrambling, getting back to their bunk, big man, apparently he was already smoking at his bunk, which good thing he's already there because he probably couldn't have made it back to his bunk for count time. So right when the police come in, they smell that twag, they immediately start yelling. And while they're yelling, something happens in big man's mind to where the police now become a threat. Obviously, we can't get into his mind. We don't know what's going on in his mental, but that's what flipped the switch for big man. And keep in mind, like, I don't want to again put the names out there, but the sergeant doing count at this time is one of the main sergeants on the pound who is like known for being that guy. That guy as in he's taking everybody to jail first quarter. He'll take you in a salad port and he'll slap people. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll jump you. You know, he's just known for being that guy on the compound. You know, people don't play with him. Whenever he's in the dorm, people normally don't smoke. They try to respect him because they want to keep him out of you know our living environment but obviously these junkies they didn't care at this point in time they're smoking in a dorm it's whatever him and another officer they come in immediately they're yelling at the whole dorm talking about shaking us down and something goes on in big man's mind so right after the police get done checking the whole dorm, talking about shaking us down, talking about how we're not getting no wreck or no canteen, big man just jumps up out of nowhere. You! Shaking, not even really saying nothing. Keep in mind, now he's 6'3", six, 6'4", six, I mean, probably, I don't know. This dude is huge, probably 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, this dude is huge. Jumps up in the middle of the count time, pointing straight at the police you but really weird like you know what i mean like it's aggressive for sure but not like all that coherent and he's kind of like shaking and twitching a little bit and you get his tail by the look in his eyes i mean like big man is not home in his mind you the police kind of shook and they kind of like want to ignore him because the police know he's a junkie and they know he smokes. And honestly, the police are terrified of big man. They don't want no smoke. They don't want no drama. So it kind of stops the police for a second. And as big man still up pointing, he's not really saying nothing. Now he's like kind of stuck, frozen, pointing. So the police kind of look at him and look at each other. And they don't even address it. They just acting like they ignore it because they don't want to start no drama with big man. So they just keep walking, counting. But then, like, that, that pisses Big Man off even more. So then he comes to again, he's like, You! You! And they're ignoring him because, yo, the police are scared. They don't want no smoke with Big Man. You! Who is counting? He's talking crazy. You! Who is counting? Now the police, they kind of like, they're done counting and they come to stand by each other. They're standing over there like in the open area of the dorm and they're just looking at him, kind of not knowing what to do. And they're slowly walking towards him. They probably shouldn't have done that. They probably should have just left. But now when they're slowly walking towards him, big man just snaps. I will knock your head off your shoulders. I will knock your head off your shoulders. Now he's flexing and now he's slowly starting to walk towards the police. This bald and he looks like the Hulk, the Terminator. I mean, the Predator all combined as in one. It looks like he's ready to go to war with the police. And it's funny now, like me telling it, but like a lot of times like you on the chain gang your people laugh at like dummy like crash out moves but this was so tense in the moment like it was silent like the wild wild west nobody's even laughing everybody's just like blow like dog like big man's about to go to war with these two police officers so immediately the police hit the panic button, but they do it like on the slide because they don't want to make a big scene for him. So all the police rush to the dorm, everybody comes in. Right when the police come in, like the main sergeant tells everybody to chill and they see his big man, the rest of the police. So now they got like seven to 10 like officers coming, coming in the dorm. And that kind of like takes big man over the edge even more. He sees them all coming in. So he's like, 
ah, ah, just like standing there flexing, yelling, and he's just ready to like tee off on anybody. So the police are like slowly trying to walk towards him, like, yo, and they're saying they're calling him by his name, like, bro, it's all right, chill. Like, yo, you will never see the police respond like this. And like, they're really like in fear of their lives. They're trying to like calm him down because they know like he's high. First of all, he's huge. He can do like immense harm to anybody sober. But while he's high, like ain't no telling what he's liable to do. So this is the first time I've seen police. Like all there's like the, the, the two main ones who are counting. And I think another guy come up. There's like three of them. They're like gently trying to like woo him down, like calm him down. Like, bro, like it's all right. You know what I mean? We just want to talk to you. And it's funny because like it's actually working. You can see like big man. He's like, You know, he's like coming to his mind. He's like actually kind of coming to. So they keep slowly walking towards him and calming him down. There's a couple instances where he, oh, you know, riles back up for a little bit. So all this is probably taking like no exaggeration anywhere from like seven to 10 minutes. Finally, they like woo him down, calm him down and they can't even cuff him. They don't even try. They just like got their arms like on his shoulder, like patting him and big man's acting like a big kid now. Like you can tell like he gets like pouty face, all sad. And he's like slowly like walking out of the dorm. And like, bro, like the moment that he walks out the dorm and the static port closes, everybody starts dying, laughing, clowning. I mean, it is not funny to where we should be laughing at it now, but honestly, looking back, it is still kind of humorous. So they get him in the sally port and man, I remember when they got him in the sally port, all the police were in the sally port. So like they calm him down and he's kind of like in a childlike state mentality to where he's like all calm and kind of sad, like walking in the sally port. But there's so many police in the sally port that when he walks in there, I guess maybe like the energy and the vibe from the other cops is kind of hostile. And he probably felt that. So right when he got in the sally port, he nutted up again. And he got like, there's like, 15 police officers, I don't know how many, but there's a gang load of police in the salad port. And he got them all shook. They like all circled up around him. But that's making it worse for big man. Now he's like standing in the middle of them like the Hulk. Like, ah, ah, just like yelling at them. And uh, again, those three officers who calmed him down the first time, it took him a while, but finally they were able to calm him down again and like woo him and calm him down. And then finally, um, they actually got him in cover. You know, and he's so big though, they gotta put like two handcuffs together to even cuff him up. No, they didn't even cuff him in the back. I remember now they cuffed him in the front. And um, man, but I remember whenever they cuffed him, he just started boo hooing, crying. And I'm talking about like wailing, weeping, crying hysterically like a child. And it just goes to show you like the the danger of this poison that's on that dope and how like it just attacks people's like psyche and their mentality in it and man dog it was insane it was crazy so i mean once again the whole point of the story is of course you know entertainment for those who just want that prison style content but also as well man like the reality behind like dope number one like yo like it may take you to a place for a time being like a temporal high but the reality is like yo you eventually come down like yo big man he woke up you know in confinement like came to and and realized that you know he had a lot of good stuff going for him while he was you know at this place in his bid even though he was wrestling with his drug addiction he was trying to work his way to work at least and go home and you know all of that kind of brought a lot of you know negative attention to him from the administration he almost forfeited a lot of things he had going on but because everybody knew he was a good guy and it was just you know an incident where he twacked out you know he was spared to where he didn't lose everything he had going on for him of course he went to jail of course he had to do some you know time and confinement and things like that but the whole point i'm getting at is dog like there's no fulfillment in a temporal high you know true fulfillment is only found in our creators only ultimately found through faith in jesus and then also number two as we all say man don't go to prison, dog. You've been there, man. We're unashamed of it. That's why we champion forever convict. Because of course we're ashamed of the past.
past things that we've done, but I know from firsthand experience in my life as well as many other people's lives as well, that is where the Lord not only completely radically transformed my life and the lives of many others, but man, because of that, that's where God really truly shaped me and arose me to be the man that he called and created me to be. So I'll never be ashamed of all the time that I did over 12 years in prison. Forever convict, I'll forever champion that, and I will never forget where the Lord transformed my life. So this is your boy Eada King, and this is the Incarceration Podcast, where we talk about prison, pre, post, and present, and how everything that I experienced throughout my incarceration has forever changed my life. This is the incarceration. So Forever Convict family, once again, we are on the journey to 50,000 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so now. Share this channel with somebody who hasn't. And listen, if you've done any time, I'm talking about a county jail, state penitentiary, federal, or even drug programs, whatever. If you want to share your story on this channel, go ahead and email me at eithekingbooking. Go ahead and put your stories in the comments below. If there's anything that I talked about slightly, you want to go you want me to go more in depth on or anything I haven't talked about at all and it's a good idea, drop it in the comments. Let me know. And also remember, I am a rapper. My artist name is E.I. The King. You can find my music on all platforms. I also have another channel, YouTube channel, uh, my official artist channel, E.I. The King. And I also have another podcast. It's called Let Me Talk Bro where I talk more so about my life, music, ministry, and all these things. Also, I have a Patreon with exclusive content. Everything is in the description below. So listen, man, till the next time. It's your boy, E.I. The King.